Hello, Vanguard. Thank you for tuning in to this special bonus chapel. I hope that it'll be a blessing to you in more ways than one. I'm so excited for just this opportunity to share this last message of the semester. And as we draw an end and, a, and to a close of the semester, I know there's so much to think about and reflect on, especially I think this has to be one of the craziest, toughest, life-changing and maybe even draining academic, spiritual, any way you want to describe it, years that most people have had in their lifetime. And I just commend and applaud you guys for getting to this point, finishing strong. Um, it's so appropriate as we are closing out this series on finish the race. Um, because man, it has felt like such a race, a marathon. Um, there were times where maybe you were sprinting through, you were jogging through, you were um, power walking, or maybe just felt like there were days where you were crawling through this race, but you've come to this finish line. And for some of you guys, it's a different finish line depending on the season that you're in. Whether this is your graduation and you are finishing this time at Vanguard or maybe you're fe uh, finishing your freshman year. You never imagined your freshman year of college was going to be this way, but you did it. Whether it's that or your sophomore, um, your junior year, whatever finish line you're getting to in this season, you made it. You are here and we're so proud of you. And I wanted to close out this semester with sharing this message and just a time to reflect, but also to grow and be excited for what's to come. Because in life, um, we see that life comes with a lot of different seasons. You were in a season of high school before this, and now you're in your college season. And then once you're done with college, you know, you will start your career, your your ministry, or whatever is coming next for you. And so I titled this message, When One Race Ends, So Another Begins. Because it's exciting, right? We get to a finish line, like you're in college, and you're running through this time, these four years, and then you finish, and it's a celebration, a huge accomplishment, especially for those that it's your first generation going to college and graduating, whether you're a first gen second or you know whatever generation you are, it's such an accomplishment to finish school. And so um, I wanted to just kind of speak a little bit about how we have different seasons in life. We're, we're on different races in life. But when you finish one race, it's all... Uh, um, it's only a matter of time before the next one begins. And so you want to cherish the race that you were just on. You want to celebrate that accomplishment. But you also want to look ahead to what's ahead of you and what's to come in this next season of life. So when one race ends, so another one begins. So I want to look at um, a little bit into David's life. And if you have your Bibles and you want to open them up to Psalm 78, I'm just going to read a couple of verses and we're going to talk a little bit about this and just um, have a time of celebration for the race that you are coming to an end and a time of preparation and excitement for the new race that will begin. So Psalm 78 verses 70 to 72. And it says this, He chose David, his servant, from the shepherd pens. From, ten from tending the sheep, he brought him to be shepherd of his people Jacob, of Israel his inheritance, and David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands he led them. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the accomplishments that have been taking place. I thank you, Lord, for the runners that have been ra running this race, God. I pray, Lord, that you would just help us dive into your word today, God, that we can celebrate our accomplishments and we can look forward and ahead to the things that you have for us, God. So be with us in this time of just celebration and preparation, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let me read it one more time. He chose David, his servant, from the shepherd pens. From teaching the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob, 
of Israel his inheritance, and David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands he led them. So my first thing I want you to think about today and remember is remember where you came from. God took David from the sheep pens. And so um, if you think about it, it's it's hard to get much lower than the sheep pens. Um, and, and that's where he took David from. And so um, it's it's important sometimes to remember where you came from. It makes me think of that um, old school song, Jenny from the Block, where she's like, I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the Block. Don't be mad at the rocks that I got. Um, but she's saying, yeah, I've made it to this point, but I don't, I don't forget where I came from. And, and David, he couldn't forget that he was once a shepherd boy, that God took him from the um, sheep pens. And, um, for some of us, it's it's uh, hard to look back at where we came from, and for some, it's it's a sense of pride. And I think there's a lot of different emotions when we when we um, look back where we came from. And um, I think of my own life and um, remembering where God brought me from. And there's some times where I, I can, there are some parts of my um, upbringing that I celebrate. I'm grateful that I had God-fearing parents that loved me um, and instilled God's truth in me. Um, and in, in that sense, I did feel a lot of um, sheltering and nurturing, but we also, um, I grew up in a really not rough neighborhood. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but from, you know, just as a child being able to tell the difference between a gunshot and a, a firework and, um, you know, just growing up with multiple gangs around me, um, fighting with each other, drive-by shootings, um, you name it, we probably experienced it in the neighborhood that I grew up in. And I, I, I'm in a season of coming back home for a little while as I prepare to get married in in um, July and um, you know the neighborhood has only gotten worse instead of better um, but I feel like remembering where I came from and even visiting it for a little while continues to put this urgency in my heart to continue to do God's will because I no matter where I look in my neighborhood I I see the need of God's people. I see the need of those that don't know the Lord and um, just looking out for those opportunities to preach the gospel wherever I have the opportunity to do so or, or live the gospel. You know, the Great Commission commands us to go and, and to preach the gospel to those that are in need and those who need to hear it. And I think sometimes we um, tend to count conversions more than we count conversations. And so I think to go sometimes, um, I heard it explained it to me this way, to go sometimes is to look for God openings. And I think back to where I came from and just all the God openings that happened to me and people who poured into my life. And I want to be able to do the same and so sometimes it's good to count not just the conversions, but the conversations and the seeds that you're planting. But remember where you, you came from. God took David from the sheep pens. Um, David's family didn't even consider him to be material for God's choosing, yet God chose him. Remembering is important um, for a lot of people. We know it was important for the people of Israel. Passover was a time of remembrance to remember where they had been. Uh, Passover was a time to remember what God had done. And so when we look back at where we came from, we can see what God has done in our life and praise God that God is working in our life. And um, I think back to just when, it, when I was in high school, just being super shy and introverted, not believing that I had a calling in my life, yet God um, would speak that over me and to know that God has brought me from where I started of being this shy and nervous person to someone who speaks on a daily basis or, you know, um, pours into others' lives, that's when you know it had to be God because I'm reminded of where I came from and where I am now. And the common denominator is my Heavenly Father. 
And so remembering where you came from physically, um, remembering your town, where did you grow up? What was your upbringing like? You know, is, is God using that to speak into people who maybe grew up the way that you did? Um, remember your position, maybe where you started out. For some of you, you've been in student leadership in your time at Vanguard. I was I was just speaking with our, our um, student leaders in SFD today, and they said, remember this time as being a student leader, whether they were a chaplain or a worship leader, remember it, like cherish it, but don't get stuck in it either. God has so much more for you. This is a, a stepping stone to so much more, but we got to remember those different opportunities and positions that God has given to us. Remember the people. Remember the people that God has entrusted into you. You know, my first 10 years of ministry, I was youth pastoring, and I still remember every single one of them, and I still pray for them. I may not be in communication with all of them as much as I was when I was their youth pastor, but I remember them. Um, no matter what you accomplish in life, never believe that you are better than anyone else or that you deserve more than other people do. Remember to stay humble. Remember to stay appreciative of what God has done in your life. We can never advance so far that we believe that we're better than other people. No. And remember, people are not an interruption in your life. People are not an interruption to your ministry. People are your ministry. And so we got to remember. We got to remember where we came from, even spiritually. Remember what it was like when you first came to know the Lord, whether you grew up in church and you're remembering those days in children's church or that first youth camp or that first um, youth convention. And maybe you just remember that first encounter you had with the Lord and just knowing that change that he did. It's important to remember those times that we had with him. But we also need to um Remember the past, but don't live in it either. We can't live off of yesterday's blessing because today God has a new blessing for us. And sometimes if we're stuck in yesterday's blessing or if we get stuck in that first time we ever experienced the Lord, it's so beautiful to remember those things. But we also have to remember that God has more for us. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he has new blessings for us today and forevermore as well. So I encourage you, remember the highs and lows of serving Jesus and knowing him. I encourage you to keep a journal because you'll be surprised when you go back and you look on those things and see how God has work, walked with you and helped you through different seasons of life. Um, I encourage you to just um, seek God, seek God every day to know him. We have to learn to serve God from a, a place of rest and remembrance and being in his word. And so that was the first point to remember. Remember where you came from. David knew that he came from being a shepherd. And when he was faithful there, God entrusted him with so much more. Um, the next thing is I encourage you to build your character building your character, being a person who's known as a person of character will take you very far in this new race that is to come. The first statement about David's about David wasn't his performance as a king or it was about his integrity. It was about his integrity, not his ability. Uh, and not his ability, not his military accomplishment, not his victory over Goliath, but his integrity, being a person of integrity. And growing up in church, I heard this a lot. You know, it takes a lifetime to build up your testimony and just a moment to destroy it. You know, integrity is what people remember about you. Um, you know, if you look at the definition of integrity, it's a firm adherence to a code, especially a, a moral one, um, a values, the quality, a state of being complete or undivided. Integrity is being the same person inside and outside. There is no double standards or justifications when it comes to your integrity. So, um, 
we know that there is value in keeping our integrity. And yes, nobody is perfect. We even know, we know David's life. We see him used as an example that he was a man after God's own heart. But David did some pretty devastating things, you know, and um, I love that he, even in the midst of his mess, he never forgot the God who brought him out of the sheep pens. And when we read Psalms, like when he says, God, cleanse my heart, you know, forgive me, we see this sincerity. And I think that that sincerity teaches us that's not something that you want to have to like keep living you when you when we've sinned against the Lord and we remember his goodness and his faithfulness I think if anything it makes me want to just draw even closer to God and say God I am so sorry I I know that integrity means so much and if I can be honest I feel like as a young minister as a young person out of college I didn't always hold on to my integrity like I should have and I believe that people thought I had more integrity than I did. And that alone was devastating. And that alone was such a blow to who I am and to my ministry and my calling. There's nothing worse than being found out or, um, you know, people coming to knowledge of the imperfections that you are living or that you have. And no, we are not perfect. We serve a perfect God, but we are not perfect. But I think there's a difference between um, coming to a point of repentance or coming to a point where you got caught doing something. And at the end of the day, um, knowing where we stand with that. So with our integrity, we don't want it just to be based on the things that people don't know about us or the things that we can hide. But integrity is being the same person who you are in the light and in the dark and a closed door and an open door setting. Um, and so having integrity means that you're the same person everywhere. And um, it's so much more than getting caught, but instead okay, I'm going to choose to um, live a life of integrity, live a life for the Lord, knowing that I'm not perfect, but getting accountability where I need to, get, asking for help where I need to, so that I can actively take steps to um, work on my integrity and keep it strong. And Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, we know this says, Above all else, guard your heart, for out of it is the wellspring of life. Or I like the message version. It says, keep vigilant, watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Our heart is just like this compass for the rest of who we are. And so um, integrity and having being a person of character means, you know, it takes work. Character is built intentionally, one block at a time, by constantly making the right choices over and over again until it becomes a natural part of your life. Just naturally choosing what is right, choosing what is godly. I think, I think back on um, my Missionette's um, theme verse of, of um, um, think on these things, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest. And it's just living that lifestyle of, of virtue and, and truth and building up your your character and building off your in integrity. Um, because in life, we don't want to just be a character. We want to have character. And so we saw that the first thing was to remember where you came from. The second thing is to be a person of character and integrity. And number three, I would encourage you as you um, are coming to a close of a race and starting a new race is perfect your skills. Per perfect your skills. Um, David led God's people with skillful hands, we read. And the skill had to be learned. And you're taking time in college to learn. And I encourage you to never stop being a learner. We know the minute we think we know it all, that's all we will ever know. We have to be teachable people and we have to become learners so the skills came by um the skill had to be learned and he knew how to lead sheep and once he perfected leading sheep god entrusted him to lead others and so um he did not instantly know how to lead and protect people but it was something he had to learn 
And it's hard because sometimes we just want to do before we learn. I remember starting off in ministry, I just wanted to be able to do things on my own, sometimes without another pastor or leader being involved. And I wish I would have taken even more opportunity to learn from my mentors and pastors instead of just wanting to do things on my own. There's so much value and wisdom and learning from other people. And so... um, Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 to 24 I'm going to read it for you says whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord not for men since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward it is the Lord Christ you are serving so we are serving him we want to serve him with a spirit of excellence we want to give God all that he is worthy of and deserving of and so we have to do it with skillful hands take time to learn take time to grow take time to be in god's presence take time to learn from your mentors don't be so quick to want to do it on your own but when there's someone there that has been around the block learn from them i love like sitting with um people who are older than me, my aunts and my uncles, when my grandpa was alive, my grandma who still is alive, my grandma who has went to be with the Lord. I just used to love just sitting with them and hearing their stories and and learning and growing from them because there's so much inheritance there to learn and grow from them and the things that that they have accomplished in life. And even I love when people share their mistakes with me because it helps me learn and grow from their mistakes. And I think that's why I try and be quick to um, be transparent with my mistakes as um, a minister, as a Christian, as a human being, so that we can learn and we can grow from one another. No matter what we do in life, we want to give God our best. It doesn't say we're going to give him our perfection because we aren't perfect, but we'll give him our best. And so um, we want to serve God by... um, doing it with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. And so you're going to be on this race, and there's going to be different seasons of racing, but remember the starting line as you approach the finish line. Remember where you started and where you're at now. Remember as you're running and those days get hard, it it would be so easy to want to, um, cuss out the day or you know just give up but remembering to be that person of in- of integrity and character no matter what season that you're in um, also remembering to give that race all you got do it with skillful hands do it with all of your heart and giving God your best because the race is not always easy it's not for everybody but God has called you to that specific race so give it all that you got remember it celebrate it remember to look to the person to your right and your left not to compare your race to them but to invest in those that are coming beside you on this race as well um you're not alone in it god is with you and he's going to carry you through Uh, when david came from the sheep pens when he used integrity and skill as a king it came with great result First Samuel 16, 13 says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And that same power that lives in that lived in him lives in you and me. Because God is with us. And when God is for us, nothing can come against, against us. Excuse me. And so um, these three things, remembering where you came from, Living a person, being a person of integrity and character, and serving God with skillful hands. It's not this special formula that is gonna um, make things easier, but it also it reminds you that you are not alone in this race. That God is with you, God is for you, and He has great and mighty things for you. And um, I think back of, at my life, and I can't. St- help but be in awe of who God is and who God has been in my life. Um, I think back of just um, my childhood and there were so many beautiful moments, some hard moments, but God has brought me from so much. I think about, um, I think about just the way I used to view myself of just so worthless and um, undeserving 
and um, I think about the mistakes that I've made and how God could have given up on me. He could have said, I don't want to use you anymore. Um, he could have said, um, you know, you've made too many mistakes for me to use you, your damaged goods. But my God has never done that to me. He's never given up on me. He believes in me and um, he believes in you too. And I just want to encourage you to know that God loves you so much. He has so much ahead of you. There's so much ahead of you. There's so much to celebrate as maybe you're graduating or you finished your freshman, sophomore, junior year. There's so much to celebrate, but there's so much still ahead of you. There's a world out there that is just so excited to have you be a part of it. There's lives out there waiting for you to invest in them, to pour into them. Somewhere out there, there's a teenager waiting for you to say yes so that you can tell them about God's love. Somewhere out there, there's a single mother that is waiting for you to just pour into her life. Somewhere out there, there's a man just wanting a brother to be part of a brotherhood where he can just learn to trust in God. There is a world out there in need and you are meeting that need by remembering where you came from, by being a person of character, integrity, and by serving God with skillful hands. So Vanguard, keep running your race. Keep moving forward because God has so much ahead of you. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you so much for every single student, faculty, and staff member. I thank you, God, that you have called them to their own specific race. God, I pray that you would just remind them that you run beside them, in front of them, behind them, God, that you give them living water to drink from as they run on this race to keep them hydrated and filled with your Holy Spirit. God, so would you just be with them, encourage them, celebrate them, God. We applaud them and their accomplishments, God. And we look forward with excitement for all that you have in store for their lives. So God, we give you glory and praise. And we pray that you would just help us to continue to grow from where we started, continue to be a person of character, and to continue to serve you with skillful hands, God, and give you our best, God, serving you with excellence in everything that we do. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In your precious name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. It has been such a great year. I know it hasn't been easy, but you made it. We made it. I look forward to just being in person with you more and more next year and um, have a great summer. We love you guys. Please know that you can reach out at any time. My email is crystal with a K dot baka at vanguard dot edu. All right. I love you guys. Bye.